Hey, Yoda, do you have a girlfriend? I'm just trying to figure out how aliens reproduce. Uh, I guess you're trying to figure that out, too. Reproduction. It's one of the most fundamental features of life on Earth. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's so fundamental, we sometimes use it as the definition of life. One black blob turns into two black blobs. And so sometimes it's, it, we use it as a definition. Uh, and so if it's that fundamental, maybe alien life should also reproduce. But how do they do that? How does alien life reproduce? This is something that uh, Captain Kirk has probably thought about quite a bit. So here's the Earth, and we're trying to figure out the life on Earth how does, that, how does that life reproduce? Well, to even start thinking about alien life, we need to know, have an overview of the type of reproduction of life on Earth. So let's consider life on Earth, and it's a subset of life in the universe. That's natural. But so the same thing must be true of reproduction on Earth. It, too, must be a subset of the reproduction in the universe. So here's the kind, in the yellow circle, is the kind of reproduction we mortals are familiar with. We don't know everything about the reproduction on life on Earth, but we know some things. And if we study, the biologists will, uh, the biologists will tell us, oh, there's a little bit more. And then if we really do a lot of work, we can figure out all the different ways of reproduction on Earth. And when we're that far, we can then start to make more educated guesses about the types of reproduction that life elsewhere in the universe could use. So. Here's a phylogenetic tree of all life on Earth, the prokaryotes in pink at the top, the eukaryotes on the bottom. And we knew that the eukaryotes are misplaced in this diagram. It's a little old, so we got to put them over into the archaea, and so let's do that. But let's look. Now, the prokaryotes in pink, they are predominantly, they do binary fission. And we'll talk about that in this, in this uh, video. But let's look at a more modern phylogenetic tree. Here that is. And here is binary fission. That's, those are the prokaryotes, the bacteria and the archaea. And notice that the eukaryotes in the lower right are excluded. So binary fission, what is that? Well, here's a simple diagram. And we start out with a bacterial cell on the left. And we've got some parent cell DNA there in that squiggly string-like things. And then we have a purple donut called a plasmid. And then we have the thing starts to divide in two. Even the plasmids start to divide in two. The parental cell DNA starts to divide in two. And the artists, to keep track of these two strands of DNA, they made the parent strand black and the daughter strand kind of bluish. And on the far right here, we have the original DNA parent cell in one of the new cells. And then we have the copied DNA in the daughter cell. Now, if that were the way things happened, then the daughter cell would be young, the parent cell would be old, and bacteria would get old, but that's not the case. This is wrong. This artist, I'm showing you something I shouldn't be showing you. So let's look. How do we resolve this? What is the truth? Well, it's a little bit complicated, so let's look at this slide. Now, on the left is a bacterial cell, and it has a circular chromosome, and on the far right, there are two cells. It has reproduced. How did that happen? Well, let's look. There are two parental strands of DNA on the left. And there's what's called the origin of replication at the top. And starting at the origin, you then have what are called replication forks, and they move away from the origin. And there's a, when they do, the parental strands get pulled apart. They get replicated as daughter strands. And you can see and they, and the replication forks go further and further away, and then you well, you have the parental strands in dark, the daughter strands in light purple, and you can keep track of them. And then on the far right here, you can see that there are, is a per, one parental strand on the top and one parental strand on the bottom, and one daughter strand on the top and one daughter strand on the bottom. And that means that these two new cells, there's not one you can call old and one you can call new, because they both have one parent strand and one daughter strand, so they're both equally old. Now here's a lovely movie of binary fission. And what's going on here is that each cell gets longer and longer and then divides in half and longer and divides in half and longer and divides in half. And there's no sex going on here, but 
they get longer and then just divide, so there's reproduction. It's a lovely movie of bacterial reproduction, reproduction without sex. Now, that's the binary fission happens in almost everywhere in this tree except in the eukaryotes. So notice that the, the root of the tree near LUCA, that's also just binary fission. Now, since organisms at the root of life probably did binary fission, binary fission becomes a good candidate for alien reproduction. Why is that? Well, the origin of life on Earth and the origins of life elsewhere are probably more similar than the subsequent products of separate evolution billions of years later. So here's a diagram of that. Let's imagine that the origins of life are similar in red, and then on one planet, life evolves from the red into yellow life, and on another planet, life evolves from the common origin to green life. So we have two separate planets with the evolution of life takes, makes life diverge. On our eukaryotes, maybe the way that we reproduce is too derived or too quirky uh, to be good candidates for ET reproduction. Let's look at this a little bit more carefully. It's an interesting idea. So on the right, we have evolutionary divergence from similar origins. The similar origins are the, the red oval. And on these two planets, we have yellow life evolving and green life evolving. But maybe that's not the way it is. Maybe, here's an alternative. Maybe life has separate origins, like yellow, green, and red, and then maybe there's evolutionary pressure that produces similar life, that would be blue life, everywhere in the universe. I think the one on the right is correct, but so let's not exclude the one on the left. Now, there are alternatives to binary fission in bacteria. Now, here we have one single cell, and it starts out, everything's going normally, and it says, oh, you know what, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then it says, I'm going to divide in two. And then it produces this green thing that squeezes, and then it produces two cells. One of those cells stands here, and then it goes around and around and around, and it does the same thing. But if there's some kind of stress going on, I don't know, not enough water or too much salt, then what the thing does is, instead of doing this, it does this. It sporulates. And that's when the mother cell produces two things, one here and one is a spore. That spore is very hardy. It sits around and sits around and sits around. And then when the conditions get good again, it gets, there's water, then it says, ah, I'm gonna, become, I'm gonna become a normal cell. It germinates and then it goes around and around normally, normally, normally until there's stress again. And then it goes over here and becomes a spore. So here's another alternative. This type of bacteria, there's the mother cell at the top at B, and then look what happens. It then produces two offspring inside of itself, and then at E, they start to break out of the mother cell. I guess the mother cell must die, but then uh, you have two new cells. So there you have something getting older. You have a mother cell and two daughter cells. Here's another thing, is that there's a biocyte, and it uh, turns into a pizza pie, and then it turns into all kinds of green dots inside of itself, and then I guess the mother cell dies, it breaks open, and it releases all the biocytes, and they do the same thing again. There's another way, it's called budding. Here's a planktomyces, and the, here we see this red thing producing offspring. And so, we've talked about reproduction, and we've talked about binary fission, sporulation, and budding as alternatives to uh, the, the, the different types of, uh, the different ways you can reproduce. But notice that none of what I've talked, talked about here involves sex. There were no genes exchanged here. The thing just got bigger and the DNA was um, re replicated, but there was no exchange of DNA. So we're eukaryotes, and so it's kind of strange because with us, in eukaryotes like us, sex and reproduction are linked. They're very closely linked. And it's even hard for us to think that they're not linked. But for bacteria, sex and reproduction are separate processes, like eating and sleeping for us. So you can see in this painting by Van Gogh, we have sleeping, and on the right, there's eating. And that's similar for bacteria. They have sex in one way, and reproduction is just something completely different. They don't even associate it. Like we don't associate sleep with eating so much. <coughs> now, Let's talk about bacterial sex. 
There are three different kinds in these three different columns, transformation, conjugation, transduction, and it's kind of like talking about the Kama Sutra of bacterial sex. What are the various ways in which bacteria can have sex? What are the various ways in which they exchange genes? Well, on the left we have transformation. And there you have free-floating DNA, those, those blue squiggly lines. And they're just floating around in the environment and then the donor cell, I'm sorry, the, the recipient cell just takes them up. Now in conjugation, in the middle, we have a donor cell, a recipient cell, and then they come into contact. They can touch each other or they form a, what's called a pilus, like a tube, and then the plasmid or DNA gets transferred from the donor to the recipient. And then we have what's called transduction, and that involves a virus, in which the virus infects a donor cell, it takes some part of the donor cell's DNA, and then it goes and infects another cell, and when it does that, it inserts some of the donor cell's DNA, and that's how you get uh, DNA transferred from a donor cell to a recipient cell via a virus. Now here's a picture of conjugation. Remember, that's the middle one. And you can see between these three dark blobs, you can see there's, there are four pili, and there's one pilus indicated there. What's kind of cool about here is you see the white dots all along the pili? Those are viruses. They're called bacteriophages, or simply phages. And each of those pili is covered with hundreds of phages trying to get inside the pili. They're trying to get their DNA inside the pili so the recipient cell will say, hey, here's some DNA, I'm going to reproduce it. And that's the way the bacteriophage gets reproduced. Now here's, a, here's another picture of conjugation, two bacterial cells, a very long pili, a tube between them. And again, you can see the pilus is covered with hundreds of phages trying to get DNA into that tube. Now here's another picture of conjugation. We have two E. coli cells in the upper right, Streptomyces in the middle, and right there where the red arrow is, the conjugation is occurring, there's some gene transfer between the Streptomyces and the E. coli. So there's gene transfer between, not only between separate individuals, but this is between separate species. These are different species or strains of bacteria exchanging genes, and we're not used to that at all. That's kind of strange. We're just not used to that different uh, species having uh, conjugation. So on the left we have sex, gene exchange, but no reproduction. Things are not getting duplicated, they're just an exchange of genes. On the right we have reproduction with no sex. That's the binary fission movie we saw. There was no sex going on, just reproduction. It was binary fission, no genes were transferred between separate individuals. So in bacteria, sex and reproduction are really separate things. So let's recap. In the universe we have reproduction, but well, on Earth we have a whole bunch of different ways of reproduction. The, the kind that we're familiar with has just grown from a little yellow circle to a larger yellow circle, and we found out that binary fission is the predominant way that most life forms on Earth reproduce. And so maybe, maybe an educated guess, would be that also extraterrestrials also go through binary fission. Now there's one thing that we've left out here, and we've talked about reproduction as if it's a universal, ubiquitous kind of thing, but we could also ask, will alien life reproduce? Well, maybe it doesn't. Maybe there's just persistence. There's an alien black blob and it just sits around, it kind of changes and evolves a little bit, but it doesn't reproduce. It never divides into two. So Yoda, to reproduce you don't need to know about sex. Maybe you can just divide in two. I guess your reproductive strategy depends on what happened to your ancestors a billion years ago on your planet. Did your ancestors do binary fission? I'm asking because that's my best guess.